When you're making a Jira project, you have to pick between Scrum and Kanban. And in this video, I'm gonna show you what the difference is, what are the pros of each, what are the cons of each, and most importantly, which one is right for you and your team. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel, drop a like if you get value out of this video, and let's jump into it. So when I'm in Jira and I go to create a new project and I pick a software development type, which let's face it, 99% of you are going to be picking a software development type because if you want all the bells and whistles of Jira, all the features that Jira has to offer, then you have to pick a software development type anyways. So when we do pick software development, we are greeted with two options. So actually, we have quite a few options, but let me tell you right out of the gate, you do not care about any of the rest. This last one, bug tracking, in all of the years that I've been using Jira, never once have I used the bug tracking because it's just not that valuable anymore. Prioritization, product roadmap, and product discovery are a different Jira. Those are Jira product discovery, so you can ax those out of your options because you don't care for those. And then we have the top level planning and cross team planning. And these actually are not a Jira project, but rather a project plan, which you still need a Jira project for. And think of a plan as strategic and your board as execution. And so you don't care about those either. And so really we're left with a critical decision. Do we go Kanban or do we go Scrum? And in the comment section, let me know what is your preferred method? Which one do you and your team use? Because they're both very similar. They're both gonna function very close to each other, but there's a significant advantage in one over the other, and we're gonna cover those in detail. So let's start off with the easy mode. Let's start off with the easy low-hanging fruit, and that is Kanban. When you pick Kanban, you're really just signing up for a board. And so you're basically gonna use Jira in what I call easy mode because you're not going to get all of the scrum rigor and scrum discipline that comes with scrum but you do get a board and you are able to visually see your work. And that's essentially what Kanban means. Kanban just means visual, right? It's a visual signal. And so when you pick Kanban, you're going to get a board. You're gonna get some default issue types. These are being rebranded to work types. And you're gonna get a default workflow, which does not match this particular template here. Now, Lasting does have a bit of a typo here, and I've been telling them for years, but they haven't fixed it. And then, your reports are a little bit different. Now, if we go through with this one and we actually make a Kanban board, this is what it looks like. And this is the reason why I don't like the Kanban board because when you create a new item, right? We're just gonna create a, a new thing. We're gonna go to our summary and type in a new work item. And when you click create, you're going to automatically create this in your backlog view. And if you have a lot of things that your team's working on, this backlog is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And so on your board itself, you're gonna have a lot of work. Now, mind you, everything else about this is completely configurable. You can add your own statuses, you can move statuses around, you can do whatever you wanna do with your statuses and columns, but the backlog will grow on you and it's gonna get pretty significant. So there's like a halfway step here. And so what you're able to do is you can go to the board settings of a Kanban board, go here, go to your layout, go to columns, and you're going to notice that there is a Kanban backlog. And so what that lets me do is it lets me move my backlog status from the backlog column to the dedicated built-in native Jira backlog. And what this is going to do is it's going to start treating our board a little bit more like Scrum minus some of the rigor. But let me show you what I mean by that. So the first thing you do is you have this new backlog up here. And so when you click into that backlog, that item that I created, that EK2, notice that's in the backlog, but it's not visible on the board. Unlike a few seconds ago, go back and rewind if you need to, you would have seen two work items on the board. Now there's only one. So naturally the question is, how do we get this item from our backlog into our board then? Well, that's the beauty of this, right? Because you don't just wanna bring everything willy nilly, right? You don't wanna bring all the backlog work into your board, because then we're back to square one, which was we're overwhelmed with all the work. And so you wanna be strategic here. You wanna, you wanna be very prescriptive and you want to prioritize, you wanna groom, you wanna refine the work. And when something's ready, it's at the top of your backlog, then you wanna move it into your selective for development, which is basically gonna tell us, okay, these are the items that we've selected from the backlog and we're gonna do this. 
right? And now some teams get stuck on the selected for development, selected for in progress. You can rename these things if you want, but you essentially want to have a distinction between these are the things in my backlog that I'm not going to work on yet, and these are the things from all of that list that I'm actually going to work on. And when you do that, when you move it to that upper transition, then we are going to now have it on our board and now we can move it to in progress and now we can move it to done. And that, my friends, is the Kanban way. But if you remember, there's two methods. And so we have a scrum board. And so what exactly do we go with the scrum then compared to the Kanban? Well, the first thing is you get the backlog automatically. It's not something you have to go and enable. It's not something you have to go separate in the board settings. You automatically get that backlog. You're going to have the same work types, but the workflow is going to be different. Notice though, however, that the workflow that you get that to do in progress and done is the same as the one that it tells you it's going to give you over here. But notice that when you saw my example, again, go back and rewind if you need to, that this is not the workflow we got. In fact, we got backlog selected for development, in progress, and then done. And so at last, it has a bit of a typo here that they need to fix. But nonetheless, Scrum is going to essentially have that true three status workflow versus Kanban gives you a four status workflow. And so if we go to the Scrum method, then this is what this looks like. And I usually know that I'm in Scrum for one of two reasons. One, it says active sprint, okay? Instead of Kanban board. So that's a key indicator right away. And two, we have a backlog that's dedicated. And more importantly, in that backlog, we have the names of sprints versus in Kanban, you may not have the backlog, but if you do enable it, we're never going to have sprints. And so you're going to have the name of statuses instead. So those are the fundamental, super easy key indicators that tell me whether we're in Scrum or Kanban. Now, if you're a Scrum team, and that means you love to do story points, you love to do sprint planning, all that stuff, then your Scrum template is going to be your only option because what you get with Scrum is sprints. And so we can click on sprints here, and we are able to create a sprint. And notice this little rectangle over here that sometimes has numbers and sometimes doesn't. As you can see, when I hovered, these are story points. You'll notice in Kanban, we don't have story points. We have priority, we can assign things, we have the status of it, but we do not have the place to put our story points. And so if planning sprints out is critical for you, then the Scrum is going to be the only method that you want. And then to kind of tie this whole video off, the last and final pro and con compare and contrast between the two is in your reports. And so when you go to your reports on a scrum board, you have a burn down chart, a burn up chart, a sprint report, velocity chart, version reports, epic reports. You have a bunch of reports. When you go to the reports of your Kanban, you do not have as many reports. You don't have a burn up. You don't have a burn down. You don't have a velocity. You don't have a sprint report. And so you start missing some of these scrum friendly reports that are really good for scrum teams but you simply don't get in Kanban. Now, at the end of the day, here's the brass tacks. Here's, here's the real reason, right? So here's what I would tell you. If your team depends on sprints, if your team depends on story points, and if your team is depending on those reports, the burn down specifically, because that's one of the most popular reports in the world, then you have to go Scrum. That's the only option that you have. I would also say that if you want to use Jira, and you want to utilize and leverage all the features and capabilities that are built into Jira, then Scrum is the only way to go. Now, Scrum does require discipline and rigor. It's not for the faint of heart. It's not something you just randomly show up on a Monday morning and go, we're going to be a Scrum team. It takes rigor and discipline. And so if your team's not quite there, I would recommend you go with the Kanban method, especially when you enable the backlog. Because when you enable the backlog, you're able to hide some of that work and just prioritize or work on your prioritized work. And that to me is important. And you get the added benefit that you don't have to worry about planning a sprint. You just pull work into your board as needed. And you don't have to estimate your work. But I do encourage you that in order for all this to really, really, truly work, you're going to want to be in Scrum at the end of the day. Scrum is the best way when you compare the two. But hopefully this clarifies and gives you a good insight and a good perspective into should I use Scrum or should I use Kanban? Because that is a multi-million dollar question that every team needs to answer whenever they're creating a Jira project. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Many of you are not subscribed and we are trying to hit 100,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, take a second here and hit that subscribe button now. And if you enjoyed the video as well, make sure you hit that like button. Now, one last thing. If you need help with any of this, if you're a little still confused, 
you're like, Alex, I just still don't get it. I have partnered up with Release Team, and there's a link down in the description. My good friends over at Release Team have an army of people ready to help you out. So if you need any help with any of this, and this is just like way over your head, way too overwhelming, reach out to my buddies at Release Team. They're going to be more than happy to help you out, and they'll be able to take care of you. That's it for this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next one.